The galaxy is shaken by humanity's announcement of its new deadly weapon, the Nemesis device. Word spreads quickly, causing panic and concern among stellar civilizations. Holographic broadcasts show the devastating power of the weapon, capable of destroying entire star systems in an instant. In the streets and marketplaces of various planets, the populace fearfully debates the uncertain future. High Counselor Zaylor, an imposing being with blue skin and glowing eyes, calls an urgent meeting of the Galactic Council. Representatives of various alien races gather in the majestic Council Hall, whose walls glow with the lights of distant stars. Zaylor, in the center, opens the meeting with a solemn tone. We face an unprecedented threat. The Nemesis device has the power to destroy entire civilizations. We cannot allow this weapon to be tested. The tension is evident during the meeting. Zaylor presents the data on the Nemesis device, showing detailed holograms and scientific reports. Alien representatives of all shapes and sizes voice their concerns. The Thragon representative, a ferocious reptilian called a Thragon, speaks with intensity. If this weapon is used, there will be no turning back. We must act now. A calmer voice belonging to a humanoid ambassador from an aquatic planet asks, but what is humanity's real intention with this weapon? Zaylor shares some disturbing information. We have evidence that David Mitchell, the scientist behind the Nemesis, plans to use it against the Thark colony. If he succeeds, five billion beings will perish. The debate intensifies, shouts and murmurs filling the hall. The pressure to act grows as the reality of the impending destruction becomes clear to all present. The Council finally reaches a decision. Zaylor declares with determination, We will send an intercept fleet to stop the HNS Vengeance. Thragon, you will lead this mission by my side. Meanwhile, on Earth, David Mitchell prepares to board the HNS Vengeance. He watches as the powerful Nemesis device is loaded onto the stealth frigate. His gaze is hard, marked by the loss of his homeworld. Hand-picked elite soldiers review the attack plans and adjust their equipment. Mitchell gives a short, direct speech to his team. Today we will avenge our people. There will be no mercy. The image of the HNS Vengeance, a stealth frigate armed to the teeth, takes off from the space dock, cutting through space with precision. Mitchell, determined, watches the stars, aware of the mission ahead. His heart is heavy, but his resolve is unwavering. The HNS Vengeance sails toward the Thark system, cutting through space with precision and speed. In the command center, David Mitchell gazes out at the passing stars and reflects on the devastating loss of his homeworld, the memories of his family and friends, and the fateful day when everything was destroyed, fuel his desire for revenge. His eyes glow with determination as he holds a pendant that belonged to his daughter, a constant reminder of why he is on this mission. Meanwhile, aboard the Vengeance, the elite team is in full swing. In the narrow corridors and briefing rooms, the soldiers review their attack plans. Commander Sarah Blake, a brilliant strategist, discusses battle tactics with her colleagues, while Chief Engineer Tomas Ruiz meticulously inspects the ship's systems to make sure everything is in perfect working order. We must be prepared for every eventuality, Blake says, his voice firm. The Galactic Council won't let us go without a fight. Ruiz agrees. Our stealth technology is superior, but they have numbers. We must be prepared for evasive maneuvers and direct combat. The journey is abruptly interrupted by a surprise attack. The Vengeance's sensors detect a Galactic Council intercept fleet rapidly approaching. Alarms sound and the crew rushes to battle positions. We have multiple enemy ships on radar, the communications officer shouts. Mitchell takes command. Everyone to your stations. Shields up and weapons ready. Let's show them what we can do. Fierce battles rage in space. The Vengeance, with its advanced technology, uses stealth maneuvers and high-precision weapons to take on the enemy fleet. The frigate performs evasive maneuvers while firing on the Council ships, destroying several in rapid succession. Tension is high aboard the Vengeance. The floor shakes from the impact of enemy fire. Mitchell coordinates the attacks while Blake commands the fighter squadrons. At a critical moment, the Vengeance launches a surprise counter-offensive, using combat drones to disorient enemy ships. Despite fierce resistance, the Vengeance barely escapes, but not without damage. Several systems are damaged, and the crew is injured. The ship quickly moves away from the battlefield in search of a safe place to make repairs. In sickbay, doctors and nurses work tirelessly to treat the wounded. In the engine room, Ruiz and his team struggle to repair damaged systems, soldering and reconfiguring circuits. Mitchell gathers the team in the makeshift cafeteria. Despite the hardships, their faces show determination. 
We've been through an uphill battle, but we survived, Mitchell says. Our goal is still in front of us. Let's fix what needs fixing and move on. Blake adds, We know there are more challenges ahead, but we're ready. Together we can overcome anything. Ruiz concludes with a confident smile. Vengeance may have taken a few hits, but we're still standing. And we're going to stay standing until the end. Unified and determined, Mitchell's team prepares for the next phase of the mission. The Vengeance continues its journey, now more resilient and ready to face the challenges ahead. The HNS Vengeance arrives in the Thark system, and the sight of the colony on the horizon of its home planet heightens the tension on board. David Mitchell looks at the main screen, where the Thark colony appears as a cluster of bright lights on the planet's surface, surrounded by force fields and defense towers. The elite soldiers prepare for the final assault, checking their weapons and equipment. We're approaching Thark's defense perimeter, the navigation officer announces. Her voice conveys a mixture of nervousness and determination that is shared by everyone on board. Mitchell turns to his crew. Remember what we're here to do. We're going to end this threat once and for all. Be prepared for anything. The Thragon warships patrolling Thark's borders soon spot the HNS Vengeance and move to intercept it. The stealth frigate is fast, but the Thragons are numerous and well prepared. The Vengeance's sensors start beeping frantically as the first laser salvos cross the room. Shields up! Ready weapons! Mitchell commands as the ship shakes from the impact of the enemy fire. The space around the Vengeance fills with explosions and debris as the fighting intensifies. Using its advanced technology, the Vengeance maneuvers skillfully, firing at the Thragon ships and destroying several of them. However, the Thragons continue to advance with superior numbers. In the midst of the battle, Mitchell decides to take a bolder approach. Prepare to board the Thragon mothership, he orders. We'll take them by surprise. Under a hail of enemy fire, the Vengeance approaches the Thragon mothership. Mitchell leads his team in a daring assault, using invasion pods to board the enemy ship. As they enter, they are met with fierce resistance. Inside the Thragon mothership, hand-to-hand -hand combat is brutal. Mitchell and his soldiers face the Thragons in cramped corridors and engine rooms. The sounds of gunfire and screams echo as both sides fight desperately. Moving with precision and skill, Mitchell leads his team in a series of tactical maneuvers. They advance slowly, facing each wave of enemies with determination. At a critical moment, Commander Sarah Blake is wounded, but continues to fight, demonstrating the team's resilience. Finally, after an arduous and bloody battle, Mitchell and his team manage to overpower the Thragon mothership. They use the ship's systems to disable some of Thark's defenses, paving the way for the Vengeance to approach the planet's surface. Upon landing on Thark's surface, Mitchell and his team are ready to activate the Nemesis device, but as they approach the site, they find an advanced force field and defense towers that weren't in the intelligence reports. We're in for a surprise, Ruiz says as he analyzes the defenses. This is going to be harder than we thought. Mitchell, aware of the new challenges, assembles his team. We have to find a way to disable these defenses. Every second counts. Mitchell and his team arrive on the surface of Thark, ready to face the new defenses the Thragons have prepared. With their resolve strengthened, they prepare to overcome these obstacles and complete their mission, knowing that the future of the galaxy depends on their success. Mitchell and his team carefully make their way through the Thragon defenses on Thark. The deserted streets and imposing buildings provide an oppressive backdrop as they move stealthily, always on the lookout for possible ambushes. The newly discovered defense towers fire constantly, forcing the team to use all of their tactical skills to avoid detection. They're building up resistance. Blake whispers, scanning the horizon with his high-tech binoculars. We need to find a weakness. Follow me, Mitchell orders, pointing to what appears to be an abandoned building, but his scanner shows unusual activity. We might find something useful inside. Inside the building, they find a complex of laboratories. Facing fierce resistance from Thragon soldiers, the team fights bravely, using advanced weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat tactics. The smell of ozone and burning metal fills the air as bullets ricochet and explosions shake the foundations. During the infiltration, Mitchell's team stumbles upon a secretly protected archive room. Chief Engineer Ruiz uses his hacking skills to access the security systems and unlock the room. Inside, they find a collection of holographic documents and data storage devices that hint at deep conspiracies. Check this out, Blake says, activating one of the devices. Holograms of secret Galactic Council meetings appear, revealing discussions about humanity's potential and plans to contain it. 
Mitchell frowns and absorbs the information. They see us as a threat. They're willing to do anything to maintain control. The documents reveal a web of manipulation and sabotage, showing that the Galactic Council feared humanity's technological advancement and resilience. They were behind the destruction of our homeworld, Mitchell concludes, his voice filled with restrained anger. This changes everything. The team discusses the implications of these discoveries, realizing that their mission is not just a quest for revenge, but a fight against a deeper manipulation. We have to expose this, Blake says, but first, we have to survive. In search of more information, Mitchell's team breaks into an ancient library hidden deep in an underground complex. The walls are covered in alien inscriptions, and the shelves are filled with millennia-old records, Examining a central pedestal, Ruiz activates a hologram that reveals the Heart of Valcor, a legendary artifact hidden on the Thragon homeworld. This artifact holds unimaginable power, Ruiz explains, translating the inscriptions. It could be the key to defeating our enemies and putting an end to the Council's manipulations. The discovery changes the course of the mission. If we get the Heart of Valcor, we can turn the tide, Mitchell says with a determined glint in his eye. We have to find it. Determined to find the heart of Valcor, Mitchell gathers his team and plans the next phase of the mission. Let's go to the Thragon homeworld, he orders. This artifact could be the key to defeating the Council and freeing the galaxy from their tyranny. Mitchell and his team embark on a secondary mission to find the heart of Valcor. The ship lands on the home planet of the Thragons, a vast world full of natural dangers. Dense forests and steep mountains stretch as far as the eye can see, and the sounds of unknown creatures echo in the distance. The team descends from the ship, equipped with exploration technology and heavy weaponry. We must move quickly and carefully, warns Mitchell. This planet will not be friendly to us. As they make their way through the forest, they face a number of natural challenges. Giant carnivorous plants try to catch them, and rivers of lava cross their path. At every step, the Thragon defenses watch them closely. Automated towers and surveillance drones make progress slow and dangerous. These defenses are more sophisticated than we expected, Ruiz comments, deactivating a drone with precision. They really don't want anyone to find this artifact. During the search, Mitchell's team encounters hostile indigenous creatures. Huge winged reptiles attack from the sky, and stealthy predators lurk beneath the dense foliage. In a clearing, they find a nest of poisonous creatures fiercely defending their territory. The group fights skillfully, using plasma weapons and energy shields to protect themselves, the interactions between the team members reveal their motivations and develop their characters. Blake, wounded but determined, tells stories about her family, revealing a vulnerability she had kept hidden. I'm here because I don't want anyone else to lose everything like I did, she confesses, while Ruiz tends to her wounds. Usually focused and serious, Ruiz reveals a more human side as he shares his hope that by finding the heart of Valcor, they can bring peace and stability to the galaxy. I believe we can build a better future, but we need this force to balance the powers. The team encounters traps left by the Thragons to protect the heart. Energy traps, hidden force fields, and underground mines make approaching the artifact extremely dangerous. Each step is meticulously planned and executed to avoid disaster. After overcoming several challenges and getting closer to the location of the artifact, the team finally finds the entrance to a hidden cave. The air inside is thick and charged with a mysterious energy. They move forward, lighting their way with high-intensity flashlights. The environment is hostile, with sharp rocks and narrow passageways. In the center of the cave, on a pedestal illuminated by an ethereal light, lies the heart of Valcor. The artifact emits a pulsating energy, almost as if it were alive. Mitchell approaches cautiously, feeling the heart's intense presence. When he reaches out and touches the artifact, he is immediately enveloped in a wave of energy. Mitchell is put through grueling tests. He sees visions of battles past and future, feels the pain and suffering of billions of beings, and faces profound moral dilemmas. His mind and spirit are tested to the limit. However, his determination and unwavering will allow him to overcome every trial. Eventually, the heart of Valcor accepts Mitchell as its guardian, endowing him with unimaginable power. Now imbued with the power of the heart of Valcor, Mitchell returns to the mouth of the cave where his team awaits. His presence is different, more intense and determined. We have what we need, 
he says, holding the glowing heart in his hands. Now we are ready to face our enemies and change the fate of the galaxy. Empowered by the power of the heart of Valcor, Mitchell and his team return to the HNS Vengeance. The ethereal glow of the artifact in his hands illuminates the tired but determined faces of the elite soldiers. Aboard the ship, the crew senses a change in the atmosphere. There is a new confidence, a renewed belief in the possibility of victory. We are ready for the final confrontation, Mitchell declares, his voice firm and determined. With the power of the heart of Valcor, we can defeat our enemies and reveal the truth. In the command room, the team gathers around a holographic table to discuss strategy. We're going to need all our skills and technology, Blake says, pointing to the approaching Thragan ships. They will not give up easily. Ruiz adjusts the Vengeance's weapon systems, making sure everything is in perfect working order. We're ready, he says. Let's give them what they deserve. The HNS Vengeance enters a massive confrontation with the Thragan fleet. Space is filled with the bright lights of laser fire, explosions, and floating debris. Mitchell, now imbued with the power of the heart of Valcor, commands the ship with unprecedented precision and intensity. He uses the heart to boost the Vengeance's shields and unleash devastating attacks on his enemies. Target right! Fire plasma cannons! Mitchell orders. A blast of energy comes out of the Vengeance, destroying a Thragan ship in a brilliant explosion. The battle is intense, the Thragans, though numerous and powerful, are struggling against the advanced technology of the Vengeance and the power of the Heart. Losses are heavy on both sides. Inside the ship, the crew struggles with severe damage and injuries. The engine room is ablaze in places, and Ruiz and his team struggle to keep systems operational. In the darkness of war, true courage shines through, says Mitchell, inspiring his team to continue fighting with fervor and determination. In the midst of the chaos, Mitchell identifies the ship of Commander Thrax, leader of the Thragan fleet. It's time to end this, he mutters, adjusting the controls. The Vengeance makes a direct assault on Thrax's ship, piercing the enemy defenses with surgical precision. Mitchell personally leads an assault team into Thrax's ship. The battle inside the enemy ship is fierce and desperate. Thrax, a formidable warrior, faces Mitchell in an epic duel. The metal walls echo with the sound of blows and shots. You will never understand true power, Thrax shouts as he attacks with an energy blade. Mitchell deftly dodges and uses the power of the heart of Valcor to unleash a wave of energy that disarms Thrax. Your time is up, Mitchell replies with a final strike that defeats the Thragon commander. With Thrax defeated, Mitchell discovers crucial documents aboard the ship. They reveal more information about the manipulation of the Galactic Council and the true enemy. The Chirath, an ancient race that manipulates galactic events from the shadows. So that's it, Blake says, reading the documents alongside Mitchell. The Chirath are behind it all. We must expose this truth. Mitchell's victory over the Thrax marks a crucial turning point. The Thragon fleet, without its leader, begins to scatter. The shocking revelation about the Chirath is the next challenge Mitchell's team must face. Mitchell, holding the revealing documents, addresses his team. We have a new enemy to fight, and with the power of the heart of Valcor, we will rid the galaxy of this tyranny. Armed with new information about the Kirath, Mitchell and his team set out to investigate this ancient, manipulative race. Aboard the HNS Vengeance, the command room is transformed into an intelligence center. Holograms of historical records, star charts, and collected data are being thoroughly analyzed. The Chirath have been manipulating events for millennia, Blake says, flipping through the pages of a digitized ancient manuscript. They control the galactic factions from the shadows, using puppets to tip the balance in their favor. Ruiz projects a hologram of an ancient battle in which the Chirath manipulated both sides to destroy an emerging threat. They don't just observe, they actively influence events, he comments. We must understand their patterns in order to predict their next moves. The investigation leads to unexpected confrontations. On a neutral planet, Mitchell's team finds Kirath agents infiltrating various factions. Posing as merchants, diplomats, and military leaders, these agents are attempting to sabotage any attempt to unite the peoples of the galaxy. In a crowded marketplace, Mitchell and his team follow a suspect. The confrontation takes place in a dark alley, where Agent Kirath reveals his true form, a tall, slender figure with eyes that glow a deep purple. The battle is fierce, but Mitchell's team uses their tactical and technological superiority to defeat the agent. 
This is only the beginning, the agent warns with a sinister smile, before being disintegrated by a shot from Blake. You will never understand the true power you face. The data retrieved from the dead agent reveals a web of conspiracies. Mitchell and his team unmask several Chirath cells, exposing their manipulations and preventing sabotage attempts. In a nearby star system, they prevent the destruction of a nascent alliance between two races by neutralizing explosives planted by Kirath infiltrators. We're disrupting their operations, Ruiz says. They get desperate. In the midst of this struggle, the team finds a crucial clue. In an old file, a star coordinate points to a remote system where the Overseer, the Chirath's chief puppet, operates. Mitchell carefully analyzes the coordinates. So we've found the heart of their operation, he says. We must attack the Overseer directly. Without him, the Chirath network could collapse. Blake and Ruiz begin to plan the mission with precision. This is going to be a high infiltration mission, Blake says. We need to get in and out quickly and neutralize any resistance. Mitchell, holding the heart of Valcor, feels the weight of responsibility. This may be our last chance. We must be prepared for anything. Preparations for the final confrontation begin. In the command room of the HNS Vengeance, the team reviews plans, checks weapons and equipment, and mentally prepares for what lies ahead. Every member of the team knows the importance of the mission and what is at stake. We are going to liberate the galaxy from Kirath control, Mitchell says, looking at his teammates with determination, and we're going to do it together. Determined and well-prepared, Mitchell and his team prepare to attack the Overseer. They know the final battle will not be easy, but the hope of freeing the galaxy from the yoke of the Kirath drives them forward with courage and unity. Mitchell and his team arrive at the Overseer's stronghold, a planet hidden in the depths of a remote star system. The Overseer's fortress, a colossal structure of black metal and pulsating red light, looms ominously over the desolate landscape. Defensive towers glow with deadly energy, and drones patrol the skies incessantly. This place is a real battleground, Blake comments as he surveys the fortress through a tactical viewfinder. We need a meticulous plan. Mitchell gathers his team in a nearby clearing. We're going to split into two units. The first will create a diversion at the main entrance, while the second will infiltrate the underground catacombs. We'll use the heart of Valcor to neutralize their most advanced defense systems. Ruiz adjusts his hacking equipment, ready to disable the internal security systems. The distraction will be dangerous, but necessary. We need to give them something to worry about while we infiltrate. The Overseer's defenses are formidable. As Mitchell's team begins its approach, the fortress responds with unstoppable fury. Lasers blaze across the sky and the earth shakes with explosions. The distraction unit, led by Blake, draws heavy fire, facing drones and mechanized troops in a desperate battle. We're under heavy attack. Keep moving, shouts Blake as his team fights valiantly buying precious time for the infiltration unit. Mitchell, Ruiz, and the rest of the team advance through the underground catacombs, meeting resistance at every turn. Kirath guards emerge from the shadows and attack with inhuman ferocity. Mitchell uses the power of the Heart of Valcor to clear the way, shattering barriers and incapacitating enemies with bursts of pure energy. Inside the fortress, every corridor is a battle for survival. The team faces deadly traps and automated defense systems. Guided by the energy of the heart, Mitchell is able to disarm the most deadly traps and clear a path to the heart of the fortress. In the climactic confrontation, Mitchell finally confronts the Overseer in a vast, dark room lit only by the eerie glow of control monitors. The Overseer, an imposing and sinister figure, exudes an aura of ancient and evil power. You cannot win, human, the Overseer declares in an icy voice. The power of the Chirath is eternal. Mitchell steps forward, feeling the weight of the heart of Valcor pulsing in his hands. Your reign of terror ends here. The battle that ensues is epic. Bolts of energy collide, shaking the fortress to its core. Mitchell and the Overseer exchange powerful blows, each trying to dominate the other. The heart of Valcor glows brightly, its energy vitalizing Mitchell as he fights with all his might. In the climactic moment, Mitchell realizes that the only way to destroy the Overseer is to sacrifice himself. With a cry of defiance, he channels all the energy of the heart of Valcor, unleashing an explosion of light that consumes them both. The Overseer is destroyed, 
and Mitchell feels his life ebb away as the fortress begins to crumble. The collapse of the Overseer's Fortress is marked by a series of devastating explosions. Blake and the diversion team watching the fortress crumble retreat to a safe distance. Flake watches the destruction with tears in his eyes. Mitchell did it. He gave us victory, but at what cost? As the dust settles, Mitchell's team emerges, having barely survived the collapse. They feel the absence of their leader, but they also know that his sacrifice ensured the freedom of the galaxy. Mitchell's sacrifice marks the end of the Chirath threat. His name will be remembered as the hero who brought peace and freedom. His legacy alive in the memories of those who fought alongside him and in the hope that now shines across the galaxy. The galaxy begins to rebuild after the fall of the Overseer and the Kirath. On many planets, the devastation left by the Kirath's manipulations is evident, but hope is reborn as humanity, and the Thragans work together to restore peace and rebuild their civilizations. In every star system, damaged colonies are being revived and previously unimaginable alliances are flourishing. In the squares of rebuilt cities, humans and Thragans celebrate side by side, joining forces to create a better future. In emotional speeches, leaders from both sides emphasize the importance of unity and Mitchell's sacrifice. Monuments are erected in his honor, reminding everyone of the price paid for freedom and peace. Captain Smith, Mitchell's successor, takes command of HNS Vengeance, now renamed HNS Mitchell in honor of the fallen hero. A skilled and respected leader, Smith is charged with the responsibility of carrying on Mitchell's legacy. With renewed determination, he leads the ship on reconstruction missions across the galaxy. In a command room meeting, Smith tells his team, Mitchell showed us the way. Our mission now is to continue his work, to rebuild what was destroyed and to see that peace prevails. Blake, promoted to first officer, coordinates the rebuilding efforts with precision and compassion. Ruiz, as chief engineer, leads the repair and technological improvement efforts, ensuring that each new structure is stronger and more advanced. On various missions, the HNS Mitchell delivers supplies, helps rebuild infrastructure, and provides medical and educational support to devastated communities. The new alliance between humans and Thragans grows stronger every day. Together, they are working to dismantle the remnants of the Chirath forces and create joint defense systems to prevent future threats. The cooperation between the two species symbolizes hope for a better, more united future. The HNS Mitchell is preparing for its first official reconstruction mission on a war-torn planet. The ship, now a symbol of hope and renewal, is packed with supplies, engineers, and doctors ready to help the planet recover. As the HNS Mitchell pulls away from the space dock, Smith speaks to his crew over the intercom. We are entering a new era. Mitchell gave us this opportunity, and it is our responsibility to ensure that his sacrifice was not in vain. We will rebuild, we will unite, and we will prosper. Blake, standing next to Smith, watches as the ship leaves the orbit of a devastated planet. We are ready, she says with a confident smile. We're going to build a better future. The HNS Mitchell, glistening in the starlight, sets out on its mission, leaving behind the shadows of the past and moving toward a new beginning for the galaxy. The sight of the ship moving away symbolizes the rebirth and hope that now permeates every corner of the cosmos. With the Nemesis device dismantled and its parts reused for reconstruction, the galaxy begins to flourish. In every corner of the cosmos, humanity and the Thragans work hand in hand to repair the damage of the war. In the ruined cities, new structures are being built that symbolize renewal and hope. Devastated colonies are revitalized with advanced technology, and new colonies are established on promising planets, each one a step toward a harmonious future. Joint research centers are opened on Earth and Thark, where human and Thragan scientists collaborate on projects aimed at improving the quality of life for all species. Intergalactic schools are being established where young people from different planets will learn together, cultivating a new generation of leaders who value peace and cooperation. Reports of minor skirmishes and local problems inevitably arise, but are quickly resolved by the newly formed alliance. In one peripheral system, a territorial dispute between two colonies is mediated by a mixed team of human and Thragan diplomats who manage to negotiate a peaceful settlement. These local conflicts are inevitable, but the important thing is how we deal with them, comments Blake, now a key figure in the galaxy's peace operations. On the planet Zoreth, 
An attempted coup is put down by a task force of human soldiers and Thragans working together with impeccable efficiency. The operation demonstrates the effectiveness of intergalactic cooperation and serves as an example of how the Alliance can maintain order and security. In a meeting with community leaders, Smith emphasizes the importance of the Alliance. We are showing that by working together, we can overcome any challenge. Peace and unity are our greatest weapons. A Grand Council is held to formalize peace and unity among all the races of the galaxy. Leaders from all the planets and colonies gather in a huge dome decorated with the flags and symbols of each race. The event is broadcast to billions of beings throughout the galaxy, marking a historic moment of unity and hope. Smith, now a respected and inspirational figure, is invited to give the closing address. He takes the stage to rapturous applause and attentive stares, his presence firm and confident. Today, we celebrate not only the victory over tyranny, but the beginning of a new era of peace and cooperation, Smith begins, his voice echoing throughout the summit. The union of our peoples shows that regardless of our differences, we can work together to build a better future. He pauses, glancing at the assembled leaders and the holographs of the planets being rebuilt. We must remember the sacrifices of those like Mitchell, who gave everything to ensure our freedom. It is our duty to honor their memory by continuing their work. The dome fills with applause and cheers, a clear sign that Smith's message has resonated deeply. The atmosphere is one of celebration and renewed resolve. At the conclusion of the Council, an imposing monument is erected on a neutral planet as a symbol of unity and restored peace. The monument, an elegant structure of crystal and metal, depicts figures of humans and Thragans holding hands and looking toward the horizon. Engraved on the base are the words, In memory of Mitchell and all those who have fought for freedom, may his courage and sacrifice inspire future generations to maintain peace and unity. As the sun sets, casting a golden glow over the monument, an unveiling ceremony takes place. Smith, Blake, Ruiz, and other leaders plant trees around the monument, symbolizing growth and renewal. With the sight of the monument in the background, the galaxy moves forward, united and hopeful. The alliance between humans and Thragans sets a new standard for intergalactic cooperation, ensuring that Mitchell's legacy continues to inspire the building of a bright and peaceful future for all races.